Welcome back to The Gadget Show with myself, Usman, and our resident expert, Raman. And just before the break, we were looking at accessories, which uh, in this particular case, are for the iPad 2, which um, Raman's going to explain to us about. Absolutely. I think most of us have tablets today, and uh, we struggle with the fact that when we are using them in our, in our hands, we need, at times, I think we were slouching, you're on the couch, you're in the bed, and you want some sort of a, you know, an accessory which will allow you to use that without having to touch it or hold it in, hold it in your hands or, uh, or your lap. I think, and what we've got there, obviously, to show you is the Joby set of accessories. Uh, one of them is the Ori, the other is Yogi. This one that I have at my, in my hand is obviously the Yogi, um, and uh, this is priced at around 35 pounds. It's a neat, um, I would say, accessory, keeping in mind, the iPad has a portrait as well as a landscape orientation. So, um, and at the back, it's got a tripod, duo pod kind of a, you know, a feature behind yeah. it. And obviously all you can do is you can put it uh, onto a table or, you know, just uh, around your arms, around your, you know, uh, I would say knees, wherever you're sitting, are you in the sofa? And obviously you can just hang it next to any particular device. And, you know, you have the iPad um, absolutely available to you for free to use got an example of it on the screen at the moment so yeah obviously like a lot of people tend to use their t uh, tablets like i would do to watch say a movie for instance and That's obviously right, you don't yeah. want to be holding it all the time yes so this is where this is ideal you can like you said you can have it in portrait or landscape whichever way you want to watch the film what you I, don't have to hold on to it fantastic absolutely correct and what i do is i basically put it around my bed uh, the headset and obviously just put it like this and it hangs Obviously, at times, if you're watching a movie and you're being very lazy, you can just put your iPad onto it, and obviously, this rests at the back, and it is quite handy at times, obviously, when you have this available. You have, you have accessibility to everything, so it doesn't block, for example, your speaker output. Yep. It's got, uh, you know, obviously, space for that. Um, it's got your space for the, uh, you know, the on-off button, and obviously, your, you know, headphone jack, jack yeah. and the charging, obviously. So, it doesn't come in between the product and your usage. And I think um, it's a neat bit of accessory when you're looking at hands-free positioning and obviously something that allows you to use your product uh, without being clumsy, uh, clums clumsy about it. Fantastic, yeah, I have the one, is slightly um, the higher spec, should we call it. This is the Ori. Um, obviously, I'm gonna give it an attempt. I've literally just opened it out of the box. Obviously, if I do struggle with it, Roman's gonna help me. So just to give you an idea of how easy these products are to use straight out of the box. Obviously, I've never, you know, I've not owned this product. I don't know anything about it. So this is uh, me looking at it from a completely neutral perspective. So when I first open it, obviously, like you said, it's got all the accessories. It clips Absolutely, straight in. Yeah. Um, the first orientation of it is obviously like a book. We can see inside we've got a soft touch um, protect, protective Absolutely. of the screen. Absolutely. With the iPad, when you, when you put this cover back on, it straight away switches it off. Yep. And this material is something which activates the touch. So obviously when you switch it, uh, you know, you, you, when you fold it like yep. a book, obviously it switches it off the iPad. Yeah. Okay, so that's the, the first orientation. This one, obviously, once it's clipped in, first thing easy, we can swivel it you know, landscape, portrait, portrait whatever, yeah. whichever you want to do it. Um, so number one is if I was to put this flat on the table, yeah. if we can get the camera on this. So for example, this is flat on the table. I'm sat in front of it. I want to watch a movie, for instance, without my hands. That's position number one. Obviously it works Correct. both ways if I wanted to have it that way or if I wanted to have it this way. Yep. So that's uh, position number one. Number two is obviously, um, if you're in the office and you want to type on it, yep, this is what you're absolutely. doing. So we've got a little attachment that, yeah. here, plug that in there. Um, so that way, even if I press down on it, it it's not going to affect it. So if I was to type on this all day, yeah. it'll be fantastic there. Yep. Um, and finally, if you know, obviously, if you want to show off your new gadget to all your friends, um, it's got a full stand version, which I could quickly clip into position. Um, it's quite nice from a point of view of uh, giving you the height yep. as well as the maneuverability because you can swivel uh, and move the iPad around. So this is position number three. Uh, obviously, again, you know, just if you're sat in front of it, you can turn it either way. But obviously, the main one, if you want to show off, if you want to watch a film with your friends, yes. look at that. Absolutely. Now, that's, if that was in your room there, it would, it's got, you know... 
I think the, nice. other, the other beauty thing about it is obviously you've not you've done extremely good with this yeah. as well. <laughs> straight out of the box. Yeah. I think the other thing which is quite um, uh, is that obviously with the iPad, you are able to you know use a Bluetooth um, keyboard as well, which is the um, you know the Mac key, Apple keyboard. Yeah. And at this position, you can have a keyboard in front of you which is synced in with your yeah. iPad and easy for you to type. A lot of us in our offices, obviously, what we do is. Um, we use the iPad for a lot of emailing. Yep. So it's mostly emailing, quick replies, and at times when you have it mounted like this, you can put in a Bluetooth keyboard and obviously just type away. Yeah. It gives you the height yeah. as well as the convenience. Yeah, also obviously if it's flat on a table, you have to kind of lean over it. Absolutely. Which is yeah. obviously not ergonomically the best position to be in. Totally agree. So that's uh, another reason. So this kind of thing, we hear definitely a big advocates of this kind of technology to use with your tablets because obviously if you do want to maximize the use of your tablet if you've just got it for casual use that's fair enough but if you're a heavy user of your tablet such as an iPad or whatever you have this kind of product is essential absolutely for you. I agree yeah absolutely and I think it's it's all in all a very good design it is uh, you know quite sleek it is quite light and obviously, if you have the iPad in front, which is obviously quite lightweight itself, I think all in all, you're carrying something with you as an accessory. Yeah. Folds flat, obviously. Folds flat yeah. and, um, and not a bad accessory to have at about 55 pounds. And yeah. I would put it this way, more of office use, but if you're yeah. a sophisticated user, no, if you're a high-end uh, user, high -end user yeah. I think you will probably no, I mean, if this. you were to go on holiday and you want to, you know, take some movies with you or whatever, you've got this there. I totally agree. So, or if you've got a nice, you know, new room, you want to decorate it a little bit. This is, these are the kind of posh things that obviously Roman has in his house that we all can just wish and dream about, to be honest. But these are the kind of things that arm in his house, just all over the place. No problem. Good stuff. <laughs> okay, let's get rid of this. And close and that one fold, now. Fold, fold it back and obviously we're going to drop this here. I think next uh, thing that we're going to talk about is obviously unboxing the HTC phone. Yep. Um, the reason we picked up this phone is a lot of our user, uh, viewers have actually given us uh, some feedback through the website and obviously through the blog. What they mentioned is that, you know, especially uh, female users, they say, okay, we don't want something quite big in our hands. We want something quite small, yep. quite sleek. And I think we picked up this phone from the market though, obviously it's been launched uh, for quite some time. Yep. Uh, this is an Android based HTC phone, fits in the palm of your hands nicely, uh, quite light. And um, it's called the HTC Wildfire S yep. uh, because of the S interface uh, in the phone. And uh, very, very good features in terms of obviously looking at usual Android handsets. Um, you get the usual screens, on the phone, uh, obviously, when you boot it on. Um, and apart from that, obviously, the main advantage of this phone is being on the Android. You have the Android market. You have a lot of applications that you can download. It's got a decent battery backup, uh, supports good amount of, uh, I would say, talk time, and obviously, something quite sleek, yep, quite you can light. can see that there, yeah. And I think this is something that you can literally use, uh, you know, um, you literally put it in the palm of your hands and obviously quite sleek enough and obviously it's not a new phone but it's available from most uh, I would say operators yeah. in the UK it's available through Vodafone and I think you can pretty much get this free for about 20, yeah. 20 or 22 pounds a month yeah. uh, from that operator but some of the good features uh, which HTC has been able to bring in with uh, Google yeah. is navigation maps search it's got a browser which allows you to browse uh, you know obviously in multiple windows and uh, the usual functions that you normally yeah. nowadays what you would get expect in from a phone on a, these on a days, smartphone yes. these days yeah. so that's the wildfire s which is by htc um, obviously this is the small version you can get the wildfire in a larger version, larger version. but this particular one um, the s um, is the smaller one don't know whether s means small obviously or not but uh, that's basically how i remember uh, the difference between the two phones, obviously this one's much more smaller. Um, as Roman was saying, uh, those of you who were watching last week, Roman was telling us that uh, the Android uh, marketplace has the most in terms free of percentage apps. for free 57%, apps. 57% so uh, free apps. So 57% of free apps, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, the particular range, the Google range of applications which are available, which include the navigation, which include the street view, which include maps, which now include constellations and yes, stars. Yes. 
Um, fantastic range of free um, application products made by Google. If you do want to check them out, if you do have this particular brand of phone, you definitely want to check those out. So um, all in all, like I said, not a new phone, but it's quite nice. Obviously, if your particular thing that you are worried about in a phone is, the, is size, because all the new phones that are out there are the bigger screens. Um, this one, very, you know, lightweight, compact phone, still does all the things that you want it to do. But in a small Basic size. functions like email, browsing, yeah. you know, um, calendar, navigation, apps. I think a lot of users today want to try apps first before yeah. they buy. And I think if you're looking at that kind of, uh, you know, approach, obviously you're looking at Android handsets, which have more applications in them. And in, in particular, this one is quite popular with, you know, obviously uh, ages, uh, all ages, age groups, be it kids, uh, especially female users. And obviously if you, you know, if you have a lot of applications that you run continuously, yeah. then obviously one of the good phones to look at in the market. Fantastic. Um, we're going to go back. We were talking earlier about the awards, the T3 awards, yep. which is like the Oscars of anything technology based. So if you have any technology product there on the market, you want your product to place well in these awards. Absolutely. I think um, there is a trend in the market wherein a lot of products are now lifestyle products. Yeah. So when you look at the simple product in your house, which is a television, um, because of LCD, LED, and now LED, 3D TV yeah. coming in, I think that has become a product which has become a lifestyle product. Yeah. So everyone has a TV at home, but obviously they have, if you have, if you're lucky enough to have one of those brand new televisions, the LED 3D yeah. televisions, yeah. then obviously it's a style statement. And I think one of the awards which went to Samsung uh, in, 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 uh, in that category was the TV of the year, which was awarded to the Samsung 8000 series. 8000 series yeah. And it is uh, a TV that you obviously need to look at because it is razor thin yeah. and uh, it normally hangs up on a wall like as if it's a painting or a portrait that you're hanging. So one of, one of these things that a lot of manufacturers nowadays look at is, um, our products are products, yes, but how do they fit into your lifestyle? Into your life, and yeah. uh, some of these products then go into product development life cycles wherein what they look at is how to develop a product which is innovative in design, innovative in use. And one of the key things which most manufacturers are now focusing on is user experience. And one of the things that I'll pick up again is like your watch, yep. you know, a couple of years back. Now phones are with everyone. You know, you don't leave your house without a phone. Without a phone. And it's the whole thing about the user interface, the user experience that you get. How easy is it to use your phone? If I have to dial, switch from a dialer, you know, a phone call to a text message, yeah. to an email. And that is where the whole philosophy of, you know, when you look at user experience, lifestyle, integrating with your lifestyle and obviously design of the product comes Fantastic. in. Fantastic. Well, we have some uh, interface with that one of our users as well who wants to ask you a quick question possibly. Fantastic. So we're going to take a call. Hello. Hello. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Uh, my name is Imran and I'm calling from Watford. I just wanted to ask, uh, I want to be a wedding photographer. You, you are or you want to be? Uh, I want to be. You want to be a wedding photographer. Okay. Yes. Uh, I just want to ask about cameras. Uh, so which camera suits me well? Uh, I mean from Nikon or from Canon. Uh, right now I have D200 from Nikon. Okay. So I'm clicking with this. Uh, I'm in uh, like uh, natural photography. Uh, so okay. I just wanted to be now a wedding photographer and a uh, videographer, you know. And about video camera, I have Canon XL1. Okay. Uh, yes. So no can problem. you help me about choosing uh, one of these? No problem at all. Thank you very much for your call, Imran. Uh, we're going to answer those questions for you. So keep watching, but thank you very much for your call. So obviously, he wants to be a wedding photographer. There's lots of different things which go into choosing which particular camera you want. It's not only about the megapixels. I it's totally nothing agree. to do with that. It's about the lenses. It's about the battery life. It's about the capacity. Obviously, if you're going to take high volume of pictures, if you are at a wedding, etc. But obviously, you're going to go into more detail and let us know about it, that. It's a very open-ended question which yeah. Imran asked us. And I think in one of the episodes, uh, forthcoming episodes, we will cover uh, digital cameras yeah. and digital SLR cameras in a greater detail. But all in all, what I can suggest to him as of now is there are a lot of brands out there in the market. 
Um, if you look at Canon, if you look at Nikon, if you look at Panasonic, um, these are quite well established brands. Um, though you have brands from, you know, other cameras from brands like Sony, Fuji yeah. and Olympus, which are very well known in the market. But when you look at professional photography, high end, yeah. high end when you're looking at doing something like wedding photography, you're looking at something like the Canon EOS series. Uh, and they have recently brought out a 7D, yeah. which is uh, a camera which is 18 megapixels. It does full HD recording. It has, obviously when I say HD recording, it allows you to not just take photographs, but record 1080p, video, yeah, 1080p. Just about to say that a lot of things I've seen at weddings now, yeah. the actual cameraman will have something which traditionally I thought was just an SLR. Yes. But he's walking around actually filming with this. Like you said, it's 70, 80 megapixels yes. full. It's, I think it's, it's more than 1080p HD, isn't it? it the is, actual uh, recording quality of it. Absolutely. But when you look at photographs, obviously there are different formats yeah. in which it can take. And obviously it goes to raw format, which yeah. is 18 megapixels. But if you're a designer and obviously you take these photographs and you use it later to Photoshop and obviously yeah. do away with, uh, you know, do effects on it. I think you will take photographs in that. But it's a very good option. Obviously, apart from that, you could also look at the Panasonic Lumix series. I think the other thing which uh, Imran basically um, hinted towards was the fact that which you've covered yeah. is lenses. So obviously, when you're doing wedding photography, you can't be always going up close to the bride yeah. and the groom and obviously taking photographs. You need to have a lens, a telescopic lens, maybe yeah. a lens which allows you to you know, get everything. So um, there are lenses which come along uh, with standard cameras like a 45 millimeter, 55 yeah. millimeter, and you can obvious, obviously go across to 200, 245 millimeter as well, depending on the brand of camera yeah. that you're buying. One of the interesting things I would say that he missed out was his budget. Yeah. So when you look at budgets, obviously you can get professional SLR digital cameras for as low as 400, 500 yeah. pounds to as high as five, six thousand pounds. So the basic body, the camera shell yep. as we call it, um, will uh, cost you between, I would say, the EOS 7 and 7D, I think, is priced somewhere in the region uh, of 12, 1300 pounds. Okay. Um, but when you look at the Lumix series and the Olympus and the Nikon, they start at six, 700 pounds, depending on the lens yep. you choose, and obviously the specification you choose, you can get a very decent uh, I would say an SLR uh, with digital SLR uh, with 1080p recording in about I would say a good seven eight hundred uh, pounds depending on your budget. Depending on your budget, so yeah, that's something Imran. If you want to look into, obviously, if there's anything more specific you'd like to ask, obviously you can contact us in many different ways on our Facebook page, which is DM Digital TV, uh, Twitter, which is at DM Digital TV for those of you that use it. Um, all different ways. Oh, website as well. Website as well, yeah, yeah obviously. www.dmdigitaltv.co.uk. Yep. Slash so gadget show. Slash gadget show if you want to go direct straight to the to source. Gadget, yeah. But yeah, if that's the different ways of contacting us. Send us a mail and obviously we'll look at it uh, during the week and obviously uh, we'll get back to you on that. Um, are we going to go to these awards? I think we should. I think it's time. Yeah, it's time, yeah. Uh, tell me, what's your best guest on the, the best phone of the year? As a layperson, yeah. you would probably guess it would be the iPhone. As a layperson's guess, you would think. So let me put it this way, it is not. It is not, okay. It is not. So if it's not the iPhone, which most people out there, let's face it, were thinking well, it would thinking, be, yeah. which phone has been given the phone of the year? Well, I'll give you a hint. It is from Samsung. Okay. And uh, it is the utmostly successful Galaxy series of phones. Okay. And I think uh, the award which has gone in has gone into the Galaxy S2, the S2 uh, yeah. which is the phone of the year award. And obviously uh, that is a major up for Samsung, keeping in mind, I think they, they recently released figures wherein they said they've shipped more than 10 million of these phones in the last quarter. The Galaxy series yeah. altogether has shipped more, but obviously that the Galaxy... That particular phone, yeah. It does phone. recently, I have noticed with him, obviously my friendship circle, a lot of that phone is becoming very, very popular. Um, we're going to go to a quick caller. So, hello. 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 Yeah, my name is Suresh. Hi, you know, Suresh. I have a small, yeah, I have a small query. You know, this is uh, regarding the plasma. You know, the plasma TV. Okay. Um, you know, how good is it? Is it plasma is better one? You know, I'm talking about the VR, the Panasonic VR, the latest one. Okay. You know. So you're so talking you, about a plasma versus an LED or LCD? Is that what you're talking? Uh, LED. Yeah. Okay. So which is the better one of the two? Is that what your what your question is? 
and what about budget yeah i mean you know normally what we say is you know the plasma you know goes goes out you know very fast you know the screen is goes out very fast yeah you know but the lcd you know uh, stays for long you know the screen for long you know so that's yeah. why you know i just want to know you know uh, does the plasma screen you know uh, yeah that's, that's fine theory. thank you very yeah. much for your question suresh we um like I said, we are going to answer it very, uh, right now, actually. So, plasma, the old debate comes back again Absolutely. of plasma versus LCD. For those that don't know, give them a quick rundown. Obviously, one of them lasts longer in terms of shelf life. Um, but obviously, the screen picture quality is better on the other. What's happened is, over the years, um, as the screen size has become bigger and bigger, LCD was a constraint. So, you couldn't go beyond 46 yeah. inches. 40 and then 46. So plasmas used to be the bigger hands, uh, you know, I yeah. would say television sets, which people used to prefer. But I would put it this way, that if you're looking at a plasma and if you're looking at an LED, LED is a slightly better technology because of uh, things like it uses less power. Yeah. Uh, obviously, the battery life is, uh, you know, but the life of the LED yeah. is much better because what they do is the panel, which is used to make these television sets, has a life. So plasmas used to be between 40 to 60,000 hours. If you're watching on an average eight hours a day, that's roughly eight and a half to nine years yeah, okay. of viewing time. Now with the LED, obviously, uh, what they've done is in the plasma, there's a gas. And when the electric current yeah. passes, it energizes and it obviously creates all the colors. Now in the LED, what they've done is they've done away with that and they've fused the two layers together, which means uh, the LED lights up straight away uh, when the current is passed and obviously that increases the life yeah. it uses less electricity uh, and the other thing is with tellies let me give you another analogy and I think Suresh would probably agree with that I'm a Panasonic user myself I some people prefer plasmas because obviously they have a protective screen on top yeah which means if you're if you have a, if you have kids yeah. at home and obviously they are in obviously they want to touch the telly so plasma is uh, you know that way has a protective yeah. covering and if you are more towards when you're going to wall mount a TV, yeah. I would say, and um, obviously you have, a, you have a predefined space, you will probably go in for an LED. But in general, as the technology has progressed, you've looked at LED, plasma coming hand in hand together, but going forward with the 3D technology coming in, it is the LED, which scores on a lot of features. Obviously, uh, we will put some uh, details, further details on our website yeah. for this. But in the time frame that we have, I think you'll probably look at the clear answer is LED. Yeah, definitely. These are the type of things, obviously, the, the people will want to know which are the best TVs to buy, obviously, which is the best cameras to buy, which are the best phones to buy. So obviously, it's not just about phones. Obviously, any query that you may have, you know, regarding any type of product, if, you're, if you are, are going to make a purchase, especially with things like televisions and cameras, it's a big purchase. It's a big it's ticket always purchase, good yeah. to get an expert opinion like yourself. Absolutely. I think you don't <laughs> buy televisions uh, that often. So with phones yeah. and other products, you because it's a big ticket purchase, it's a very valid question. And I do, uh, and I, I, I do agree with him that obviously it's, it's a choice that you need to make. So we'll have more information on our website. Yes. Um, right. I think we've got a few minutes left to go. Um, I personally wanted to talk about two particular products, which uh, we did talk about the BlackBerry crash, yep. which happened um, a few weeks ago. And part of the compensation package for the BlackBerry users like myself was free apps. So just to let you know, those people who haven't obviously checked, if you go into App World, there's two apps which are available for free at the moment, which I think you will you know, approve of. One's called Drive Safely, yep. right? Which obviously um, you switch it on, someone will send you a text message, um, it will read it out to you. Right. And the full version is available at the moment um, for free for a BlackBerry user. So